Hello, my name is John Dolmich and I'm the, one of the founders and president of Business Information Group. My brother and I founded the company uh, 27 or 28 years ago. We are a York, Pennsylvania based technology firm. We've always been based in York. Uh, we specialize in traditional technology related things, app software development, wireless technologies, and cybersecurity. Uh, we employ about 100, a little over 100 people uh, in downtown York, and most of our customer base is based in central Pennsylvania. However, we have customers in 39, I believe 39 states, and then Canada, Australia, and some in Latin America. One of the things that 5G is going to do for us is create new skill sets. We can imagine today that we have a certain number of wireless devices in the United States and the world that deliver services over 4G. We are now going to multiply that number by thousands. So we now will have millions of these 5G devices delivering services to us. Those devices are computers. Those computers will break. Somebody needs to fix them. Somebody will need to be able to write new software for virtual reality, augmented reality. What it doesn't change is the focus on STEM, okay? It's all about science, math, and technology. That's it. So, but we're going to have a whole new set of things that need fixed, okay? You can imagine, you know, we have people that used to work on appliances and stoves and refrigerators and things like that. Now multiply those number of devices by hundreds of thousands and they're going to break. So we're going to need technicians to fix them. We're going to need technicians to write new software for them. We're going to need new technicians to um, analyze what's going on with those devices and are they operating efficiently and, and things like that. It's going to create a lot of jobs, but it's all going to be around science and technology with the exception of there is a manual labor component. Um, one of the biggest gaps in jobs right now is tower climbers to go up and fix cell sites. There's not enough of them. And they get paid very, very well. I just was looking at an article that had um, compared somebody who was going for a degree in, in college in arts and literature. And they get out and their, their starting salary is X. And then they have a picture of a tower climber that's working on a tower. And they have that he went to technical school for six months and the salary was four times what this person just paid for a four-year education. So it's going to create new jobs both on the technical side and on the non-technical side because we will need people in trucks that are going out to repair these and a lot of them are going to be on utility poles. So we need more qualified electricians that can work on those things. So it's a balance of both technical and non-technical jobs that this, this whole new revolution is going to create. One of the things new job seekers and students need to start thinking about in the future is what happens with this fourth industrial revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution is enabled by robots, okay? So yes, robots will replace certain jobs. They will replace more repetitive manual processes. However, those robots need to be fixed. They need people who understand how to use screwdrivers and wrenches and soldering irons and electrical meters and all those things. And currently today, we have robots inside. Robots are inside for one reason, because we have high-speed communications inside. The tie of 5G says, if I create this high-speed infrastructure outdoors, I now can bring those robots outdoors. And as any, everybody knows, we have a lot more outdoor space than we have indoors. So we can have robotic traffic guards and we can have, you know, robotic um, things serving us food on the streets. We couldn't have those services without 5G. So they tie together and they create this whole new job set. So my opinion and, and leading experts in my field, we're not worried about robots taking jobs. They're going to take jobs people don't want. 
but they're going to create jobs that pay more money, have a higher skill set, and that people actually want to do. One of the things that students can start preparing themselves for this future is, first and foremost, understand that science and technology and math is not all-encompassing, okay? You don't need to be a math whiz or you don't need to be an Einstein to be able to understand the skill sets required for these new jobs. So um, a lot of them will be trade-based. So helping students understand what makes all these things work together can help them determine what they might be interested in, what's their best fit. Okay, so and somebody who's going to work on the electrical side or with the tool side of it needs to know math. And they need to know math and science. Do they need to know high levels of math and science? No. So I always have to stress that it's we're seeing start to see a merger of trade-based and technology-based. And everyone needs to understand both to decide what career path they want they want to do. So they need to dabble in math and the sciences and the technologies to understand what makes all those things work because then they can decide, Man, I, I really like working with my hands. I really, I really want to build robots. You don't have to be a technology person to be able to build robots. Assembly is assembly. Fixing is fixing. Um, so they, you know, students really need to start looking and, and understanding what makes all these technologies work and break it down into little pieces. Um, it doesn't eliminate jobs in communications because what's this, going, what's this going to provide for everybody? A huge training initiative. So we need people that are good at training and human resources and writing training material. Okay, so there's, there's future careers for what I call techni technical literature. So you're a technical writer. So someone who really likes to write can understand the technology and then apply that and, and fit those career paths along the way. Right now, in our, in our school systems, we are starting to introduce robotics and things like that, but only as electives. And we're not introducing them early enough. We're not you know, I, I most I, I haven't seen in most schools a program to, to get these kids interested in in software development early on. You know, I mean, er, middle school. I mean, we I mean we make them as we make them when they go into high school start taking a foreign language, Spanish. You know, whatever. It's like. They need to be made, they, they need to, t because the problem, is with, the problem is with our students today is a lot of them don't know they have the aptitude to be a software developer because they've never been exposed to it. You know, so they don't, you know, I mean, it, it's, we just don't. I and mean, when I go in and talk about STEM, when they take me into these STEM programs, I'll have 30, 40 kids in a, in a, in a class and I'll do nine of them a day. Okay, nine of them a day. At best, when I say who is interested in STEM, I'll have two out of 40 because they're not exposed to it. They were not, were not articulating correctly what STEM is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we don't talk about technical writing is a STEM program, okay? You know, it's, we don't talk about app software development is a STEM program. We don't talk about, um, quality control testing as a STEM program, okay? Somebody needs to test the robot. Somebody needs to sit there and go through it. The robot is supposed to do this. Tell the robot, it, does the robot do it? it be, I mean, do the quality control. So we're not introducing the kids early enough. We're making them, I mean, the reality is, I mean, and my, my first career was a software developer, you know? Did algebra help me with application development? No. No. And I'm a math whiz, okay? Did it help me? No. Um, the, the, having the aptitude for those things, if we don't get them, introduce them to, to that, 
they don't know whether they like it or not. These things are part of our, these things are part of everybody's daily life. I've never, I've never seen somebody give, give a class or a mini seminar with the kids saying, do you understand how this phone works and why it works? And everything that goes into making this phone work, there's apps on this phone. They, they, they don't think about, okay, how does the phone communicate with the rest of the world? All they know is they pick it up and they text. They don't know how the text gets from point A to point B. And all the jobs and all the skill sets required that go into this phone. You know, that's, that's our biggest problem. We're not teaching, we're not getting them to understand the ecosystem and what all the skills and trades and jobs make all this stuff work. You know, I mean, I've, I've, I've done a few talks and I'm like, somebody needs to have a program that, and it looks, it basically looks like a, our, our solar system that makes a map of how all these things work and why. There is one thing that we have seen tremendous value in for both us and for students, and, but they need to start sooner, is internships. Internships should be starting in middle school. They can do it, they can do it during the summer, it, and it, again, it doesn't even have to be long. You know, it could be, it, it could be that they, it, as part of their class, as part of their regular curriculum, they go and once a week for one hour, go in and sit with a, and shadow a technology providing company. That's how they're gonna understand whether they like it or not. You know, and we just don't start early. The thing is, I mean, it's like we start the internships right now in, in junior and senior year. We should be starting them three to four years earlier to get them, I mean, th that's my biggest advice. My biggest advice is to the students is basically to pursue internships. And they don't have to be traditional internships where they're a month at a time or two months at a time or over the summer. You know, they, they, they need to have the ability to go to their, their counselors and say, I want to go do an internship and do multiple so they, you know, one month there at one company, one month there at another company, and the, it gets them exposed to, because that's where you see the inner workings of it, you know, to both the students and the educational system is more interaction with existing businesses and technology.